Welcome to Hot Shoe. I'm Hillal. I'm Andrew. And one of the things we wanted to do since we have this opportunity is kind of show off the things that we're interested in. Yeah, and we, we're not so myopic that we're just video games or just pop culture really, and things really like that. Really disgusting foods. <laughs> things, things that shouldn't exist. What we are both interested in are, funny enough, knives. Mm -hmm. I think there's a very delicate elegance to a knife. There's a lot of artistic in de uh What's the word I'm looking for? They're very artistic. They there's a lot of design and artistry. Heart, artistry in a knife. There's, there's a lot also, of good design. There's and also what's functional, what's utile, mm -hmm. what's pretty and functional. And is there balance to it? What kind of steel is it made of? Wait, so so we're gonna break this into two. Mm hmm So we're so gonna do uh, folders, folders. Which are, we're, we're gonna refer to now as pocket knives. Okay. Folders as opposed to fixed blade or Knives. Think of like a Jim Bowie knife. That's so, a fixed blade. Yeah. A, so a blade that doesn't fold. Shocking. So why don't you show off your case before right. I go and take control of the camera? So, this is my case. I've been collecting knives for, I mean, twenty years. <laughs> yeah. So this says Spiderco. It's not spy. I, I do have a Spiderco in here, but uh, they just happen to make this really convenient carrying case. Uh, it's Velcro. It's a pretty damn heavy when it's full. I'm gonna take your word for it. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. heavy. Um. So again, I've been collecting these for, uh, you know, 20 years uh, through various careers and personal interests. All right, so, okay, this way? Yeah, go for it. All right, so this Velcro, let's get tabs. We'll start over here, and it just. So this is a surprising amount of knives. That I'm not done. <laughs> for and then, so, uh, these, I actually carry most of these on and off, depending on the day of the week. What I'm having to wear, where I'm going. Sometimes I'll frequently not carry any, because that's not viable in every job. <laughs> and my two basic daily carries. Um, okay, so where would you like to start? What's your well, favorite? Let's start with my daily carries. My average, okay. so, if, if we're going by what I would carry on a day... Just a normal day, like today, I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt. I want something light. Mm -hmm. You know, light, easy to carry, and it's unobtrusive. Uh, so one thing I always carry with me, without fail, is my Swiss Army knife. Uh -huh. No joke, always with me. <laughs> and this is a cadet. It's super simple. has the two can openers, bottle opener, uh, one blade, and a file. There's okay. nothing fancy about it, but it's solid, and it's more useful than anything in this case. Do the Swiss know how to make a knife? They do. And a watch. <laughs> um, and a banking system. Uh, this is my uh, Kershaw, I believe. This is a Skyline. It's just super light. And it, it's a flapper, but it's not open assist, which we'll explain shortly. But you just would flick your wrist and push that. And there it goes. And it's super simple. Liner lock. Just really easy. It's light. So what is a liner lock? So that's when, see this thin piece of metal? Mm -hmm. uh, when the blade is deployed, it the liner pops up to lock the blade in. So then when you want to collapse it, you'd push the liner down. Okay, so when you're skinning your deer, or... This is, uh, this is a utility knife. This, yeah. is, this is not meant for anything. When you're cutting your seatbelt? This is a three-inch blade. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even use this for self-defense, given a better option. <laughs> um, but it's just useful. You know, I use it. I mean, I'm not, you know, a knife fighter. I'm not, you know, currently law enforcement or anything, so... Uh, You're not like in Police Academy, was it 4, where uh, Steve Gutenberg and Bobcat Goldthwait had to tie their hands wrist to wrist with duct tape and then knife fight in that abandoned, was it a car? I don't junkyard? know what you're talking about. You, need, you need to get learned up on Police Academy. Anyway, um, so it's just, it's utility. I use it to open mailboxes, <laughs> you know, cut up, you know, cardboard that's going in the trash. You know, I mean, my uses are probably what's an average use for somebody, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but... This is what, you know, nothing flashy, carries pretty deep. Right. Well, so, let me just start. Yeah. So we can do this quick. And, uh, and mine's done in layers. I, it may look like a mess, but, you know. There uh, is some order there to There is some spenders. order to it. So there's types. And some of these uh, are, are quite nice. Um, so so you pick where we start. I just start top left. I mean, you, you read English good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a normal folder. I even forget what company this is. I think it's from Ontario. It's nothing fancy. This is just one of my 
you know, it's a Taiwanese made knife. I just thought it was cool. Uh -huh. There's, I, I'm not even going to spend any time on it. I just think it's neat. And it's a liner lock. It looks pretty big. Yeah, I mean, it's three and a half inch blade, maybe. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. It's nothing fancy. It's a Joe Pardue design, whatever that means. No, okay. <laughs> I don't know who he is. So, since I can get legit that I have a Spyderco case. Yeah. My only Spyderco knife. Uh-huh. That's it. It's, a, oh, okay. it's an Endura Wave. Now, I want you to explain I, I, that part. So, this is the Wave feature. You'll see it on two or three others. Um, it's meant so when you draw it, that it snags clothing, and so when you pull it out, it deploys. So it's so the blade is deployed as you pull it from your pocket. Yeah, I've never actually found a use for that. Uh, I'm not drawing knives fast. I'm not. <laughs> Again, you're not a knife fighter. No. Um, and honestly, it just seems like I would cut myself. Yeah. But I know. I mean, we've seen people that are very well trained in it. They can do it. Mm -hmm. Like. Like who? Who's who's your D number? Doug Mike Hart. Doug Mike Hart. Mark Haida. <laughs> he's he's ridiculous. So anyway, uh, this is my only spider co. I have one. I have a. One that I carried in my law enforcement days. What is the company that uh, Doug Markaita uses? Fox. Fox, okay. I have one Fox knife. We'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, Fox are very expensive. Yes. <laughs> um, then I have uh, these three are cold steel. And I can actually tell you, I believe it's this one. This is my first knife I bought. And it's a uh, cold steel, which everybody who watches knives knows cold steel is awesome. Um, tough. They're... Uh, I believe they're built in Taiwan. Or, yeah, they almost all are. Um, uh, and this is a cold recon or a cold steel recon one with the Tonto point. Mm -hmm. And this was my like first big knife that I used. And you can see it looks mean. No, I mean you can see it's worn, been used. Yeah. It's a great knife. It's really sticky because kinda I had like tree a, sap in it. It kind of looks like a mini katana. This is. This is a utility knife. Right. I mean, this is a big utility knife. I would not carry this. Because it's, I mean, I have, rel would you say, relatively large hands? Yes. And this is filling my hands. And you know what that means? Shut up. Large gloves. Anyway, that's that's Cold Steel Recon 1. Then I have another variation. This one's much newer. I've never carried it because it's ridiculous. This is also a Cold Steel Recon 1, but in a drop point. Wow. Again, it's cool, um, but... Meh. Yeah. What would I do with it? You know, it's it's too big to carry. The clip is kind of a deep carry clip, but it just... You could fight crime. <laughs> and lose. <laughs> um, my favorite Cold Recon is actually this, which is a Cold Recon. Um, this is a Code 4, um, which in police term means all clear. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is a spear point. And this is a an aluminum handle. This is an all metal knife. This thing is I love this thing with the spear point especially. Yeah. Just it's pretty, right? It is. It has jimping where the thumb is. Jimping terms grooves where your thumb so it doesn't slide. Oh. So, I love this knife. I'm trying to do these as quickly as I can. Um kind of forget what this one's called. Uh it's uh an uh I think this is a Kershaw. Yeah, this is a Kershaw. I think it's like a leaf or something like that. Who I, knew a baseball player could design a knife? That's stupid. <laughs> um, and actually, it tells you. Oh, this. Oh, that's right. I always forget Kershaw's have the obscure names. It's the 6548 Brown Black. Shockingly, I wonder how they got the name. I don't know. Um, it has the wave feature, too. So when you go up, it opens. And actually, this is an example of a different lock. This is a handle lock. Oh, actually, I should have pointed that out. But this is not a liner lock. This is actually a, fr a frame lock. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So, see the frame? Yes. All right. I don't like this knife because I actually tore a hole in my pants one time because the blade is so <laughs> loose. And I'm going to jump back. Well, no, I don't need to. I'll just keep going. However you like. If you want to jump around, that's fine, too. This is another Kershaw. I just thought this one was cool. But it's another wave feature. This is my first wave feature knife. Meh. It's, it's kind of chunky. It's kind of ugly. It's flat on one side, and this really cut my hand badly the first time I carried it. So, and this so is, is a success. So this is a 6044 B TBLK. Clever name. Black. Yeah. That's, it's shocking how they come up with these. I'm trying to get through these top ones. These, so uh, just for information's sake, these knives are the least likely I'm to carry. Right. They're big. They're goofy. Actually, this is. Is that how you organized it? Uh, no, I actually did. Uh, sort of. Uh, it, it, it's a... <laughs> Thing that makes it interesting. So uh, you'll see these more, uh, this company more on our fixed blades. This is an Ontario knife company. It's an American-made knife. Um, USA, USA. 
this is, I love this knife. This is, again, this is actually a Chinese made one. This isn't one of their American knives. Um, but it's flat ground. I forget which one this is. I, I kind of an asshole. But, um, I forget which one it is, but I love the grip, how the blade's raised. Mm. There's lots of really good purchase. It's kind of big and chunky, though. It's kind of heavy in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And wear a belt. And it carries tip down, which I kind of hate. Um, so, yeah. I, but it's Ontario Knife Company. I forget what it's called. This is this was an Amazon purchase that I regret, but I thought it was really cool on Amazon, and then it came. And no course, one has Amazon regret purchases. Um, so this is a razor one. It's supposed to be an easy open, but as you can see, <laughs> you have to reach around anyway. Yeah, and it kind of looks like a straight razor. So it's supposed to be kind of like that. Uh, it's Damascus, but crappy. Uh, carbon fiber handle. So this is actually, if you put all the pieces independently, is a pretty expensive knife. So my issue with this is this is supposed to lock. Mm -hmm. Oh. So would you want to carry it with a straight razor type? No. Um, see, as you can tell, the liner lock is too long or the blade uh, so it's like catching. point is too short or too long. Yeah, so it doesn't lock. And I mean, yeah, it was Amazon. Yeah. yeah. So it's cool. I don't even know who makes it. It's a piece of junk. I mean, it's actually a well-built piece of junk, but it's a piece of junk. It's cool, but what do you do with it? No, shave. Bears. I mean, you can't use it for self-defense. It's just purely slash, and you can't thrust with it because you just cut your own fingers, <laughs> um, and it won't pierce anything. It's just it's it's interesting. So now we're going to get into the more realm of stuff that myself would carry. I'm trying to do this as fast as possible. It's fine. Um, this is a, another Kershaw. I didn't realize I had so many Kershaws. But this is, I love this knife. I only have a couple of beefs with it. It has a lot of, you know, it's a stainless steel handle. And it's the, this is an assisted open. So the other, my original one, my other Kershaw, you had to flick your wrist because it's not open assist. This has the paddle and it's open assist. So wow, you don't have to do much. And this is a frame lock. You don't have to do much and it just opens. Um, yeah, it's speed safe. That's actually what they call it. Um, but it's a 3655. Uh, I love this knife, but uh, my problem with using, and anybody who knows knives, if you're going to carry them for use, getting a flat metal handle is actually terrible. Why? Your hand slips. It's super slippery. Ew. See, this at least has the finger stop with mm -hmm. the open assist, and it has pretty good thumb support, but I mean, sweaty. Anything. This thing's gonna fall out of your hand. It's slippery. How and dare you always assume that it's my hand that's sweaty? I mean, <laughs> but but it's very and it has rounded edges, so it's it's a little slick. But I love this knife. It's the iPhone of knives. Yeah. So this one is getting much more into my normal carry, and I believe this is a yeah, this is a CR. Uh, uh, I can't think of it. Cold River Trading Company, I think. Uh, and this is an open assist, and I will use this one. This is, you can tell it's had a good amount of wear. And it's its not open assist, it actually is just the tab. There's no spring inside which opens assist. Sorry, that is open assist. Is, there's a spring that helps you open it. But that one, this is a really pretty knife. It's a Indian design. CRKT. These are really cool knives. Um, I just love these. I, I think they're pretty. They are? I, have, I have a couple of these. Not of this model. This is a frame lock, or excuse me, a liner lock. See, the liner has just been embedded inside the frame. Uh huh. A really cool texture. Cool knife. My favorite CRKT. I will carry this one because it has such a deep clip. You can carry it really easily. And this thing is, I mean, you feel it. It's not light. And it's a metal handle. But this one just has, uh, this I would take if I go going camping or hiking. Kind of looks like a hand grenade almost. I use this one if I'm cutting up a lot of boxes, but, mm -hmm. and this one has the paddle, but it's not open assist. Okay. So there's no spring. It's just, you really have to flick it, but super thick blade. Wow. And you can tell I've really used it quite a bit. So this is the Foresight, but really solid lockup. It's a liner lock and it's, you could tell I've really used it, but great knife. I mean, it has the grips, a tri hit wall. So. I mean, it's just really comfortable. It's nice and thick, which you don't want if it's not good for carrying daily. But really cool knife. I love this knife. Um, don't get to use it too much on day to day because it weighs your pants down. <laughs> Again, wear a belt. Yeah. Uh, Drawstring, a belt. 
You're this, an adult. This one I just bought because it was interesting. I don't think I've, I maybe have carried it once. Another Kershaw. I swear I don't remember having as many Kershaws. This is, again, a flapper, but not open assist, no spring. Mm -hmm. That You'll learn very quickly, a spring or open assist really makes the price go up. <laughs> and um, It's like power steering. But I like this one because of the blade. I thought the blade was super That's cool. That's an interesting design. It's It not, kind of looks like a Kukuri. Well, it has, it's like a recurve, but not. <laughs> it is a recurve because it has a recurve. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's cool. It's kind of a ch chunky blade. The knife is kind of chunky. It's not even super comfortable. I just think it's neat and it's kind of big and it's heavy. And I think the lock is the most idiotic thing I've ever seen. How so? So there's no liner. There's no spine lock. There's no frame lock. Mm -hmm. So you see the thumb swivel? Mm -hmm. You actually pull it, push it forward if I can. Sorry. So it. convenient you to You push use. it forward and that releases it. Huh. So... You can't if you can't do it with one hand because you'll slice your fingers. Not good for getting it put away before the cops see you. That's stupid. <laughs> it's legal. <laughs> it's, um, but it's uh, I just think it's neat. But it's it's about as useful as you know forearms. <laughs> you know it's hey, like, don't knock until you tried it. That's weird. <laughs> um, one of my very favorite knives ever. This is like if I were to get rid of a lot of these, I would keep this one. If I would get to get rid of ninety percent of these knives, I would keep this one. This is my only zero tolerance knife. These are expensive. They're heavy. Um, Let's see the handle. It's just you know a G10. It this is uh, this is a liner lock too. But this is my first open assist paddle knife. Um, so this one so it has the paddle like say any of these, but it has a little spring that makes it mm -hmm. pop out. Um, these knives are tanks. <laughs> May I see? Yes. Okay. Zero so, tolerance are yeah. super high quality. They're very nice well, knives. You know, these are two hundred bucks minimum. Wow, it feels comfortable in your yeah, hand. Yeah, and I like how it's the biggest, big, broad blade. You yeah. Can do, you know, it's my only problem with this zero tolerance of anything is that it it doesn't hold an edge very well, it, it relatively. Mm-hmm. But it's so big and beefy, I don't care. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay. Love this knife, and, and basically we're going to be starting to crawl up into some price gap a little. Oh, except not, now that I see the next knives. Um, I actually bought this brother knife with your brother. No. Oh. He was with me. Um, I don't like SOG knives all that much. They, now, what is that? Some, is that a... SOG bank? is a company. Oh, okay. Um, I think their designs are kind of... Although I have several of them. I think they're cool, but I don't find most of their knives all that useful. Okay. So this is an open assist, and it's the fastest open assist I've ever done, but it's the hardest to engage. So it... And again, with SOG, they put in a manual safety. Uh -huh. Why in God's name would you do that? Yeah. So, so that you don't cut yourself? I yeah, imagine. but imagine if you had to take it out and you have to flip it. Look how <laughs> tiny that thing is. Um, so this is, I believe, the... the I will actually be able to tell you. You really have to like, push your finger into it. And then Ooh. it just... You could see that. It almost looks automatic, but it's not. And yeah, this is the SOG Zoom. <laughs> they went clever. I like it. It has a really deep thumb groove. Um, the, the blade is a little thin for my taste. And there's a little play in it because mm -hmm. it's... So, in the world of knives, the more automatic, so to speak, you get, uh, there's going to be some play because if you have a tight friction fit, the knife won't deploy. Okay. Uh, it does have the button to release it. It's, it's not a button to engage it. You have to manually... <laughs> it's cool, <laughs> but it's not... Not practical. And honestly, all this, it's not super comfortable, It's but it's cool. Again, I don't like SOG knives for carry. Because, yeah, I mean they're all right. I just I have no opinion. Um, okay, so this is a Sog Flash Two. I can tell you this one it has the goofiest manual safety. Look how ugly that thing is. I guess you know what red means. That means good to deploy. Oh, okay, that is weird. Um, it is. It is probably one of the most useful knives that I own. Oh, and it's completely goofy, and I would never carry it. And it does is. it go gorsh when it opens? No. Um, it is a little awkward, though. But um, it deploys super fast. Its blade is nice and thick. But, you know, I mean, my reasons for not carrying this one are funny. I think it's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't want to look at it, why? Well, let's see. The... Oh, yuck! It's a flat ground. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's comfortable. It's light. It's got a thick blade. It's It holds an edge just fine. It's everything that Andrew should love. It has very little thumb, so your hand can come off a little. Uh-huh. Um... Then, oh, I'm sorry, it collapsed it. You just pull that down. I mean, it's it's a nice knife. I just, 
It's just ugly. Mm -hmm. Like, if you have more attractive options and you're carrying and you're spending, you know, these knives aren't super expensive, 45, 50 bucks. Um, I, I mean, for my money, I'd go nicer, but it's it's extremely useful and carries very deep. You can actually carry this and people don't even know you have a knife on you. So now we're going to start, I'm going to do some of these out of order now. Okay. Then I'm going to do my last two SOGs. And I love this knife design. This is a SOG, SOG Kiku. I hate the name. Um, yeah, I actually have a fix. SOG Kiku's delivery service. K-I-K-U. Uh, I, I love this design, but these, as Halal could even attest, these are heavy. This is yes. this is only a three and a half inch blade, and it is heavy as easily a four inch. Yeah, but, they, they're pretty solid. But look at that. And it's a matte canvas finish. Mm -hmm. It's, a, you know, it's a, a micarta, which Halal should know what that is now. Yep. It's like a texture grip. Yeah, but it's a canvas feeling, so they're just really cool. Um, I love these. This one is probably the most useful. They carry super deep. You can see the clip actually extends beyond the knife, so your Ooh. pocket will be here. Mm -hmm. But the problem is it's so thick and heavy that you look stupid, <laughs> and it weighs down your pocket. Um, this is the large Kiku folder. Oh, because the other one wasn't large enough. This thing, funny enough, it carries super deep. You can actually carry it relatively comfortably, but then you deploy it with its four and some odd inch blade. Okay, so hold on. Let's get the other, deploy the other one and hold it up. All right, so this is like, a, I think, a three and a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is monstrous. And it, I mean, it's literally like a Jim Bowie knife uh, and again, in a folder. I don't have small hands. No. <laughs> this is... <laughs> that's, I, like, that's a little sword. I like these... <laughs> But it's not real super practical. This would be if you're no. backpacking or doing something. But look, and there's <laughs> or also fighting shredder. Yeah. Well, there's also no thumb. Your hand can actually it has a little th <laughs> finger groove, but your hand can come out of that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and to collapse their liner locks, nothing special. But I love the. I think they're just so pretty. They are. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm trying to not jump around too much. We're almost finished. I know it probably doesn't feel like it. Um, I'll go here. This is my Boker plus Stingray. I just love this knife. It's not practical. It carries pretty deep, except the clip bends. And this is this is a you know $130 knife. I mean, but this is what I would consider the prettiest, one of the prettiest knives. And and this is a, a frame lock. And look at that. And this is based on a design from Monero, I mm -hmm. think, I believe that was a $1,600 knife. And they Boker Plus, which is Boker. But you can really see where the design this is, is important. And but this is one of the most comfortable knives, mm -hmm. and that blade is just insane. But this is again not a small knife. No. But it's the Stingray, the Boker Stingray. It's just it's a monster. I love this. It's pretty. It's metal handled. But again, the clip is crap. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. This is my cheap one. Hillal will appreciate this. <laughs> yeah. What is this, Hillal? That is a karambit. This is a karambit. Not a super well-made knife. This is the Mantis by some company that makes karambits. The karambits have recently been made famous by... Now, what's his martial art? Uh, Kali. Kali martial artist Doug Markaita. They've recently... Uh, gained some popularity because of Doug Markaita but, and, and his YouTube and success. And anybody that... Well, and his training and... Uh, well, yes, but... And his, he, he has a TV show. Anyone who does not watch his show, what's the show? Uh, Forged, Forged in, in Fire. It's a, it's all about Season knife making. Season 3 starts on uh, August 23rd. Oh. <laughs> uh, I did not know that. Um, so, this is a Karamit. Is, so, you carry... It is a reverse grip knife. It has mm -hmm. the finger ring mm -hmm. and it has a hooked blade. So, how are you supposed to carry it? Not like a traditional knife. No, that would be foolish. You'd probably hurt yourself. All right. Um, I wouldn't trust my life with this knife. What is this? Two-inch blade? Yeah. It's only, you know, it's meant for hooking and puncture. It's really just that this is an offensive it's very, thing. Yeah, it's a very specialized art form. You don't, you don't use form. this to whittle. You know, <laughs> I mean, and this knife is honestly not super nice. It's light. I still wouldn't trust because you can see how close your finger has to get to that, the, the sharpened edge. Mm -hmm. And to, for these to be legal, by the way. Uh, they have to be a folder. Funny. More than folder, they can't be sharp on both sides. Oh, yes. A traditional, traditional crombit, you can hurt on the draw. Yeah. These, you can only do it on the one. Yeah, That's traditional crumbits are sharpened on both ends so that no matter how you swing it, you're dealing damage. And that you're hurting yourself. Yes. <laughs> um, but I like the crumbits. I, I'm a big fan. Um, if you want to impress the guy as he's dying, you carry the crumbit. All right. Uh, I'm trying to get some of my novelty knives out of the way. But, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> so jump. get the one out of the way that goes bang when you 
<laughs> and the little flag comes out. Yeah, that's the end. So we're going to get to some expensive knives now. No, you know what? I do have one more cold steel. Expensive like does mean novelty. I forgot about, this is a novelty knife. This is a cold okay. steel. I forgot. This is actually this, a new one. Hold on, hold on. This is cartoonishly big. It, just wait till it's deployed. <laughs> I feel I would never carry this. I just thought This it looks cold. like something Judge Doom and Roger so, Rabbit so would carry. So as you remember from the previous, the top row, these are all cold steel. Cold steels mm. are, in this case, large, the ones I have. And it is goofy. And this is called the Spartan, and you'll see why. Um, so it's not practical. I wouldn't carry it. It weighs roughly the size of a kitchen knife. It looks like the brick you use to charge an Xbox One. So. Okay, hold on. <laughs> so as you can see, it's modeled after the Spartan. Hold it, hold it up against your chest so we can get a nice focus Here, on it. You want to see how large it is? <laughs> I mean, That's ridiculous. That, I mean, do I believe you could use this to defend yourself? Oh, yeah. I believe if you pulled that out, if it, would, it would end fights. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the cocking of a shotgun. But this has a spine lock. Um, look at that thing. I just thought it was cool. It's cartoonish. I will, I will never carry this. I would never trust my life with this because I couldn't deploy it fast enough for it to matter. Um, <laughs> It's, it looks like you're holding a machete. You know what's funny? It's super comfortable. You could chop all day with this, although I'm pretty sure the blade would give out long before <laughs> that. But it's just, you have to admit, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I would never carry it. It's the Cold Steel Spartan. It is cool, but it, so doesn't, it doesn't even fit well. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into Ooh. some... Okay. Um, that, that knife's nickname is Black Dynamite. Yeah, and actually I forgot. I have an open assist here. This is a Gerber. It's my only Gerber. Not just the makers of baby food. It's, that's Gerber, that is Gerber, <laughs> this is just a, this is like a $30 knife, I don't even know what it's called, it's, it's not. The day they got the knife and apple and cinnamon mixed up, so, Well, if you notice any one consistency, this is my only serrated knife, I don't like serrations. Why not? Because they're a pain in the butt to sharpen. Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, these are almost washed out from me sharpening the straight. You can see that. Um, this knife is okay. It's really hard to deploy. It's kind of neat. Never going to use it. Um, I'm, I'm glancing over a lot of these quickly. So I'm going to get, in, before I get to my novelty knives, these are probably some of my nicest knives. These three. Mm -hmm. And anybody that knows knives, these are Benchmades. Mm -hmm. Benchmade are expensive. Are they're they top ex of the line? They're getting up there. <laughs> they are, so I have three. So this one is just cool it's super now light. keep in mind when you go oh i've got three of these knives we're not talking about like this entire pack was purchased in a day this is a lifetime this is 20 years of collecting um, there's this one um and this is i forget i'm so bad at these this is, this is a pardue design i forget the which one this is but it's a spear point super light i would carry it in place of this one my daily carry, mm -hmm. the Skyline. They're almost the same size, but I like the spear point. It's just less utile. Right. Spear points can break. Um, but what makes, sorry, I'll do it without start cutting myself. What makes Benchmades are their axis lock. It's a double lock, and you just pull it down. Hmm. So you flip it up, really easy locks, and that's a really solid lock, and then it, you just pull it down and it falls. Hmm. Super, and this thing is, this thing is a nice knife. I love this. The knife I carry most. Above all others, who all seen this one? Up close, <laughs> I have the stitches. So, okay, yeah, this one is cool. This is my favorite knife. This is a uh, a Benchmade, if I can recall. Oh uh, crap! It's like a, I think it's a 940 or a 930. Um, it has the reverse Tonto. It's an Osborne design, all steel handle, titanium spine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It has silicon bearings, so it just, in the halls use this, it just it glides open. open. It, it, it's like anti-gravity. It's super light, and it feels like a tank. I mean, this thing is, this thing is a nice. <laughs> it, it is the pinnacle of design and art combined. Yeah, this, this, and these are, again, this is over $200. Yeah. These are beautiful, and this thing, you could tell. The blade gap. The craftsmanship. Well, I'm talking the use. Yeah. I mean, you oh, can yeah. tell I use this thing. These are great knives, and it has extremely good And steel. it'll last you forever. Yeah. That's the important thing to remember, that knives are expensive because they're designed to last. When well, you buy... Well, they aren't. If, if you buy a cheapo knife, you're kind of getting what you ask for. You'll have something sharp for a little yeah. bit. Well, and again, if you look at my collection, I have knives that are... 
you know, 25, 30 bucks. Yes. And then I have some, we haven't gotten to my most expensive knife, but then you'll see some that are $400. Yeah, but the difference between a 400 and a 20 is that... Oh, it's it's, an, it's like buying it's like buying a Kia and, and comparing it to a Mercedes. <laughs> yes, they're both cars, have four wheels and go, but they're a different experience and the yeah. reliability is different. Yeah. But um, this is my last Benchmade. Uh, I love this knife. It's just kind of big. Um, but this is a Benchmade Rift. I actually know the name. Uh -huh. And this is a cool blade. This is, again, an Osborne design. It's the reverse Tonto. And this thing is just... It doesn't have any thumb support, and it doesn't have a finger group, so it's a little, little slippery. But, I mean, this is a nice knife. Yeah. You could tell I have not really used this knife at all. I've carried it a couple times. It's a little big, but it's super nice. Love this knife. But but again, for for a utile daily carry knife, the I think it's a 930. This thing is just without comparison. And this entire collection, I would give up most of these other knives and keep this one. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. Uh, all right, we're on the last few. I'll get out of the, let's see, um, I'll show you my only fox knife. So fox knives, um, they're, they're nicely made. They're made in Italy. Uh, and this is, this is a Speckwog by, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, I forget his name, but it's one of, uh, Joe, uh, Doug Markaita's protégés. So this is a Speckwog Warrior. They're, they have a fixed blade version. This knife is meant to be carried mm -hmm. tipped down. So its design uh, is, I'd say, aggressive. It's a little, yes. it's a little mall ninja. Yeah. But, uh, but it has a spear. Paul Blart, mall ninja. So it has a spear point. So and it's meant that the point is always in line, mm -hmm. no matter where you stab. <laughs> um, I mean, this thing is a tank. This is a heavy knife. I've carried this once, and it felt weird. <laughs> um, it has Especially a, since you were at a children's park. This knife... No, I was actually at Lord of the Rings, though. Oh, uh, good place for it. Um, so this knife it is comfortable-ish. You can use it like this, but it's... it's Why, yeah, that doesn't look... So it has this. It's a nightmare to sharpen. I, just, I would I imagine. Have, I have a belt sharpener. A sharpener? Sharpenter. A belt sharpener. And the problem is you can only sharpen that, or you can sharpen this. You can't do both, because I've, I've severed multiple belts, because it'll hook on that. <laughs> So, this is meant to stab and then pull out yeah. and rip. This yeah. is very sharp. Uh, it's a cool knife. It It's heavy. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's actually... only knife that's heavier is the Monster Knife Spartan Knife. The goofy... <laughs> but it's cool, and this has a lock, but... Mm. Yeah. it's it, This thing has the most robust. The spine lock is probably a more than a quarter inch thick. It's not breaking. No. I, I would break long before. Yeah. In fact, I locked it. Um... But, and it's goofy, it's just, it's hard to deploy, but it is cool. And I own a fox knife, I was very happy about that. Alright, we're getting into my autos, um, which are legal, so shush. Uh, you just can't carry them, really. Um, this one is a cheapie, this is a Shrade. Uh, this is 50 bucks, maybe. Mm -hmm. It might even be slightly less than that. It has a manual, and it's only, it's a single action, so in the world of auto knives, single action is... It only will deploy automatically one way. One way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are almost like switch blades. Imagine no. a switch blade from a movie. Switch blades come out. Right. I'm I'm tr just trying to give kind these, of a visual. These would be base. stilettos. Right. I have switch blade examples. Oh, okay. Yeah, never mind then. This is a stiletto. This is what they call an out the front, meaning the blade. It's an OTF. The knife <laughs> deploys out the front. So this one's a little good if you have to get used to it. But there's a deploy. This will travel up. It's a so it's a little goofy, but... And that's it. This, I can tell you several things about this knife. First of all, it's too thick. It's too heavy. Yeah, and it... it the blade steel is crap. I accidentally hit a piece of glass, and it completely dulled it. It's funny looking, too, because the blade doesn't quite match Let's put it this handle. way. Glass damaged the steel, not the other way around. Yeah. Um, it's it's goofy. It just... And then to, to reverse split, it has this little button you hit. Pull then, it back yeah. in and then lock it. Uh, it has a glass breaker, but it's it's honestly... It's ugly. It's not useful. I was going to give it to Hilal at one point. <laughs> yeah, I would have used it for peeling oranges. All right, my three most expensive knives. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to leave the prettiest one for the end. So, there's these knives called Ratworks. It's mm -hmm. a, not a huge company. 
and they designed an automatic knife um, that was their own unique design and it uses, this is a Ratworks MRX, this is a mini, uh, I have a standard MRX right here. These are even the same blade type, so they designed this chain drive, there's actually several lengths of chain right there that wing the blade out faster than you might. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen uh, this one. They're all metal handles, these are all mill. these are... It's kind of like, it's kind of like a bike wheel. Yeah, yeah, it's essentially. These are not cheap. Because of this. This about three hundred dollars for the mini. Yeah. So it really is a very powerful assist. Yeah. Like you can get it open. Yeah. It it just And these are single action. Uh, it it uses the tension while the knife is folded yeah. so that when the tension has, is released. It has some kind of dual capturing yeah. springs. But these are so cool. Again, the design uh, this this isn't really a utility design. Yeah. No. This is a hurt somebody design. Yeah. <laughs> because you can point slash I, you could do some utility stuff, but I love these knives. Okay. Super cool. Here's the... This one is pretty. But again, the problem with carrying this, it's thick, it's heavy. Blade's really cool looking. But it's it's almost the same. These kind of knives, you can hear how fast they are. Yeah. Is yeah. there a sound of fast? Yes. Usain Bolt and these. Yeah, well... Yeah. And you could hear how hard that blade hits. Yeah. But these are... That is a well-designed... I like the design of the blade. Yeah, they come in several blade shapes. Actually, my favorite one, which I have yet to get, is that they have a recurve blade one. Mm. It's a Persian recurve. It's pretty. But these are super cool, super nice, super expensive. Uh, and it's not super common. All right, so you ready for the... The piece de resistance? Well, it's not, it's not real. I mean, anybody that knows knives. The ratatouille. Anybody that knows Those knives. Those are the only French words I know. Well, certainly not repertoire, as you proved. <laughs> or resume. Shut up. Wee uh, wee. Oui, oui. So anybody that knows knives knows what this is. What is that? This is. <laughs> so this is an Ultratech. Excuse me. This is a Microtech is the company. Uh huh. And these are an out the front automatic. This is a my only double action knife. What does that mean? Oh, well, I know what it means. I want to know what that means. That's one action. Uh huh. That's the second. All it is is a thumb engage. You push up to a dagger spear point. Mm -hmm. Then you pull down to has, a brick. Has a carbide window punch mm -hmm. on the bottom. Super light, super thin. Not sure you'd want to carry this and have to explain this to anyone. Nah. Um, everything about these knives is. Custom. But officer, it's double action. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can own them. I'm not sure about the legality of carrying them. Yeah. So uh, everything about these knives is made to, so people can't clone them. First of all, doing the engineering to make these is yeah. roughly a nightmare. What, it, it, what is are, the he, nation of the... This is your American made. No kidding. Yeah. I, all, all my super high-end knives are American made. <laughs> wow, I'll be damned. We actually make good knives, but we're pricey. <laughs> uh, yeah, like this, 400 bucks. Wow. And it's light. It's all aluminum, mm -hmm. except for the carbide skull crusher on the bottom. Um, Window punch. Skull Crusher, Window Punch, same difference. Um, and you've used this knife before. I've, it's you've, elegant. It's it's quite simply, it's like, you can tell engineering differences. Yeah. I mean, it's light. It's scary fast. And it's it, like holding science. Sure. Um, it's But what's good about it out the front is, I don't have to let a blade swing up. I don't need two hands. And it's You don't need your blade swinging wildly. Yeah, I mean, it's good to go. I mean, even the knife is just, the tip is, is delicate. And, I mean, look at that thing. And it's, these do we, are... Do we need to take a break, Andrew? No, I finished already. <laughs> um, and then, but would you say... It's, I mean, oh, this, this oh, is, this is one of my favorite knives to play this with. This is a work of art. Again, I never carry it because I don't want to have to, yeah. I don't want to break yeah. any laws and I don't want to um, explain it. Yeah. Because uh, it's not like, I'm going to open my mail. <laughs> <laughs>